thank you so much for finding time for our interview. And uh, my first question is, is the following. We talked to you a couple of months ago and you uh, mentioned a notion of creative leadership. Could you explain to us what meaning stands behind this, behind this uh, definition? Well, I think there are two concepts there. One is uh, leadership, which is really critical. Um, if, you, if you look at what Davos says about the state of the world, then the absence of leadership is one of the reasons why we're in such a mess. Um, and really, we need to think about that in a strategic kind of way. Um, and we need to, I think, to invent a new form of leadership, which is I'm calling creative leadership, because this is different from the old top-down down style of, of managerial um, kind of implementing programs as if they are fixed to a much more open, flexible uh, way of operating, where which is inclusive of people, which is embracing new ideas that brings together areas of art and science in one space so that we really need to be a more people-centered how we approach the idea of leadership because it's relationships that really make things happen and the, the non-profit sector and philanthropy in particular is in a good place to foster that kind of leadership. Is it closer to a network model? Yes, I think a network model is you know, is a, is a way to think about these things because networks are great equalizers. They begin to think about the connections between people rather than top-down hierarchies that tend to rely on order and hierarchy and stuff like that. We need to think, to think about the contributions that all different kinds of people have to make to the process of leadership. So networks is a good way of, of beginning to think about that. All right, and you mentioned the, the role of non-profits in this process. And I know that you are a supporter of, of uh, a new narrative for philanthropy. Uh, what is this new narrative about and why it is needed? I think because the world has changed. I think that philanthropy, um, although it has an ancient meaning, I mean, it, it derives from the love of human beings, and that's a Greek concept. Most of the way it's found expression is through the United States and Britain, and it's a, again a rather um, fixed model of, that's based on um, a, a regulation of charities and a fairly narrow conception about what can be done. And I think that the, with the growth of emerging market economies, places like Russia, Brazil, right. and so on, you've got a new, new kind of e energy, and that the, the emerging economies are bringing challenge to that old-fashioned way of thinking about the world. So I think that foundations and others need to change the way they operate and learn from the East and the South, rather than just fixing on an old-fashioned Northern Western paradigm. But do you think is it possible to, to find a common language uh, worldwide taking into account this, this variety of different models in different regions and countries? Uh, that's the question number one. And number two, uh, do you think there should be a leader behind this process? Well, I think that... Yes, I think we need dialogue between. But I th also think we need to... Um, actually support the development of the emerging market philanthropy because that's where a lot of the energy is. So I think it's not at the moment an equal relationship. And things like the Olga Alexeva Prize have done much to lift up um, work that's being done in the Global East and the Global South. Um, and I think that you know more of that needs to happen. I would like to see the leadership coming from the South because I think we, you know, we, for too long um, there's been a col colonial mindset, particularly from America and Britain, about this is the way you do things. And I'd like to see a more democratic uh, evolutionary style coming from um, from the uh, you know f from the emerging market uh, economies and you know the new center at the the Patanin, um, foundation is a way of perhaps thinking about that and beginning to open that dialogue and do you think that the global north is ready to to listen to and to hear uh, the narrative for something that comes from the global south Yes, I think that the Global North is increasingly um, recognizing that it needs to change its ways. And I think that there are uh, two forces that are, ex you know, are driving that. One is that um, people are questioning the basis of philanthropy increasingly. There are a number of books 
that have come out recently that are saying, hey, what is the legitimacy of this field? And so that in a sense, I think that we need to kind of reconceptualize it from that, that angle. But I think there's also, um, from the right wing, um, a kind of authoritarian strand, particularly in some parts of Europe, that's basically saying, you know, the state is the arbiter of all things. And that's a bad mistake. But philanthropy needs to respond to that and actually uh, create its, its new narrative. And increasingly, foundations in, the, in Western Europe are, are recognizing that that is the case. And, uh, for example, Russia could be one of the voices in, in, in this process. Right? Very, very important voice, I would say, because you know, Russian philanthropy has a lot of energy behind it because it's, it's relatively new. Uh, whereas you know, part of the problem with the, the UK and the US models is that they're old and it's, we've always been done it that way. And, and that, you know, if, if you think about the energy that's been in the room at this conference, it's actually thinking about people are searching for solutions. And in Russia, you have, you know, for example, the, so there are 70 community foundations here. Uh, that, that, that's extraordinary, you know, that these are local mobilized efforts of citizens to actually do things differently. That's terrific. Uh, beside, besides the community foundations, what, what, are the, what are the things you would like to point out when you talk about the state of the Russian philanthropy, both strong and weak ones? Well, I don't pretend to be an expert in this field. Um, I mean, I think that Giving Tuesday is a, you know, is a very good example of how to do things differently. Um, the other uh, dimension that I'm aware of is the work in uh, arts, education, the creative industries that Russian, is, you know, Russian philanthropy has really led in. Uh, but other than that, I think I, you know, I would need to pass on the question and do more studies before I answered it. Okay, is it, is it one of the reasons why you, you um, agreed to join the International Advisory Board uh, of the Philanthropy Development Centre? Absolutely. I, I, I mean, I think I welcome that initiative because I think we need some new thinking around philanthropy. One of the things I'm, you know, critical of is that the the, the philanthropy centres have typically been set up in universities. And although they may produce good academic work, there's not enough that's actually filtered through to the field, to practitioners, to begin to in, you know, bring practitioner voices into that debate. And the academic um, industry has tended to focus on rather narrow research questions, whereas I think it leaves out the question of values, purpose, um, opening up the space for dialogue, and I would hope through the new centre at the you know the Patanin Foundation will actually be a, a place which is vibrant, where there will be you know vigorous places for debate as well as research as well as activities that actually meet the needs of the field. I think that's what's exciting for me about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this uh, for sharing this, Barry. Uh, let's uh, come uh, for a second to to today's um, uh, endowments forum. Uh, uh, what is, meanwhile, your major takeaway from the first part of the forum? The first part of the forum was just the simple the energy of thinking about new ways of creating wealth and, and, and the recognition that actually endowment is an important feature. I mean, that, that, it's not the only feature, but I, you know, I like the variety of the, the different people on that platform who were saying much the same thing, but from rather different points of view. And I think, in a sense, if you want to develop a field, you have to have your own money. And having your own money is called an endowment because it gives you, guarantees you independence and it guarantees you a kind of longevity that often non-profits don't feel they have because they go you know, hand to mouth uh, from one year to another uh, and struggle along. Whereas if there's an endowment uh, facility, then you, you, you have some kind of sense, of sense of permanence. And what do you think are the major barriers for endowments development in emerging markets? Take into account the relatively short philanthropy history there and maybe some other factors. I think the understanding is the big one, that you're trying to do something entirely new that is counter-cultural, that's not against, it's, it, it's about innovation, mm -hmm. and it will take time to develop, and you should give it time to develop. And it's not the fact that you haven't got the money, but you haven't necessarily got the right kind of social attitudes. I had a conversation after my talk there with somebody who says, how do I, how do I persuade businesses that this matters? 
uh, because it does matter. But it's the same kind of investment in society. You're investing in a good society long term, not immediate returns. The great thing about an endowment is that it's the gift that gives forever. So if you give a gift into an endowment, it, it continues in perpetuity because people can live off the interest of that gift. So it actually secures um, you know, the, 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 the thing that you're trying to do. But I, I, business people don't necessarily see that because they want an immediate return. And governments don't necessarily see that because they're thinking their budget lines are very short. So that it's really that changing the attitude towards long-term thinking, systemic think, you know, what kind of society we want. Mm -hmm. And maybe the last question, if you were to establish your own endowment, then in what, in what um, specific area, specific direction would you work? Well, I think the question you started with, I, I'd invest in creative leadership mm -hmm. because I think that's the key to, to the, the future, which is that it's not the old leadership of top-down hierarchies, it's actually the new leadership of ordinary people mm -hmm. having control over their own affairs. Worldwide, we have a political crisis, which is because the decline of manufacturing, the decline of stable m market economies means that people don't feel they have a role. We have to widen out the leadership in society to a, you know, to a more creative one. I see that really strongly here in, in the community foundation movement, which is where you know, I, I think I begin to put, the, put some energies. But creative leadership is the key concept for me. Great, Barry. Thank you so much for this interview.